the Death Slinger. Death Slinger. You know you could have just called him a cowboy, right? He doesn't even sling death, he pulls it towards him. Even then, it's not an escape, so what'd be the point? The Death Slinger was the last killer to be added in 2019, and he is centered around the Chains of Hate DLC pack. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I always get a lot of questions as to who I'd prefer from Dead by Daylight, from what intellectual property, and I always respond to that with, meh, I'd really just rather they do things like this. Oh yeah, there's the total 180, I'm so ahead of you, fucking loser. That's not to say he's the perfect killer, but he gently rides the line between fun to use and interesting to counter. The Death Slinger preoccupies that slightly currently popular theming of grizzled cowboy obsessed with revenge, to the point where I wouldn't be shocked if his terror radius was composed by Gustavo Santanala. Also, he seems to be ahead of the rest of the killers in terms of brain power because he was the only one who thought to bring a fucking gun. The Death Slinger's power allows him to fire his rifle, but not real bullets, no. The entity apparently personally checks for everything that would be reasonable and simple, and then asks you to leave that shit at the door. Instead, the cowboy fires out a giant spear that rips into a survivor's chest and drags them to him. This starts up a small mini game where the killer has to reel in the survivors before the line breaks. Meanwhile, the guy on the other end has to find bits of level geometry to get stuck on. If the chain snaps, it damages healthy survivors and leaves them with a deep wound. If you pull them in and get them close enough to hit, you damage them and leave behind a deep wound. You might be asking why the hell you should ever even bother with the tug of war if the result is the same, but if you hit them, you get to just wipe off your weapon and avoid this stupid headache that Caleb gets. Wait, a lengthy stun? An ability that leaves a shitty lingering wound that survivors can fix a- OH GOD THEY'RE BACK! The only real difference is that an injured survivor will never be killed by a broken chain. If you want to finish the deal, you have to get them in close. The last thing worth mentioning is that you can cancel the whole thing by attacking and missing. This saves you from the long stun, but if the survivor was healthy, they don't get injured. Now look, I don't play this game like some S-tier virgin with a sexual assault case pressed against him. No, I play this game in my underwear with my headset pushing back my hair while the right earphone is off so that I can listen to the pedestrian stand-up that I have playing from my laptop. So, before I delve into the actual aiming mechanics, allow me to read out this statement from my lawyer. So you can probably tell all of that nonsense with the chain doesn't fucking matter if you can't hit your shots in the first place. The Death Slinger's gun fires out a very high speed projectile, but it still has travel time. So you need to aim slightly ahead of who you're trying to hit. You can fit this through most tiny spaces on the map, but you should treat these like Huntress hatchets. Even though you have unlimited ammo, you have to reload for every missed shot, and you move substantially slower while the animation plays out. For most people, I think that's going to be the main challenge of playing this character, because the gun can be a little tricky for those who haven't played the game a lot. Mr. Quinn also has a broken leg, so he moves slightly slower than the rest of the killers. While the gun feels smooth, the small projectile size and the general trickiness of the projectile speed might lead to a lot of misfires. If this sounds like you, don't worry. I have even worse news. When you get to high ranks, survivors will begin dodging your bullets by ducking or weaving out of the way. That's why I need to bring up now the holy grail of lies that has ever graced my fucking eyes. One of the problems is that most of the loops in this game feature nice bits of chest high cover, so you could spend a massive amount of time lining up the thumbstick and going for their heads, but you move slower while aiming, and the head is such a small target, and they can still try to make a read on you. Though maybe we should admit if you hit them in the head, they shouldn't be getting up from that. My advice to you is to run monitor and abuse. The Death Slinger's country music is only 24 meters at base, and the spear fires out at I believe 16 meters. Using this perk reduces that heartbeat down to the bare minimum rage required. Once you've found yourself in a chase, look for closed off routes, ones where the survivor can't easily maneuver around. Just a nice, clean shot. If they're healthy, it's fine to just shoot them once they drop a pallet. This is a surprisingly common scenario, and while they drop the pallet, you have the perfect shot available, provided you're not underneath it. You can also do this with windows, but your melee attack will actually reach through it, so you can both injure and down survivors with less effort. This makes you a lot stronger than you realize, and if you don't recognize it, the survivors will. The moment you aim at them, most survivors go into a crazy frenzy, trying to move as much as possible. You should remember this, it's one of your greatest tools. I'm not even kidding. Survivors will tend to preoccupy their thoughts with nothing but avoiding that bullet to the point that they'll ignore all of the obvious options they have to escape danger. Think of it like that one weird Xbox game no one remembers. Sometimes you want to conserve your shot, so just menace them with the rifle and walk up to them while they panic. Granted, if you do have the worst inhuman butterfingers this side of the console wars, most of the add-ons at your disposal might help mitigate that. I spoke about this during my Legion video, but I prefer killers that have add-ons that improve their power rather than reduce their penalties. Deathslinger isn't 100% trash, but most of these reduce the reload time or the stun you get from breaking the chain or the cooldown from a missed shot, and like, how about we work with some positive reinforcement, okay? Oh, and look at these fucking red ones. Like, how specific and useless can you be? Spear a guy from 15 meters away. Yeah, sure, let me just scale the fucking riggings first and get out the spyglass. See the aura of people in the terror radius while I have someone speared? I can't even turn my head around while I've got them hooked. 
So not only is this dependent on people being in my heartbeat, but they also have to be in a very specific direction that I can't change. I'm not saying they have to be great, but these honestly trigger so rarely that you would be better off just attaching a few yellow ones. I mean that too. 0.025 seconds off of the fucking missed shot cooldown is more valuable than this. Give me a break. Normally I'd want to go through all three of his personal perks, but there is one in particular that I want to focus on. Because Gearhead is the same weaker version of other perks, and I think Hex Retribution is just okay. This perk would main Sombra and drink Miller Lite while watching an episode of JoJo's Part 1. Dead Man Switch activates when you hook the obsession. This turns the perk on for 45 seconds. If any survivors get off of a generator during that time, it blocks that generator until the timer is up. Generators that have this effect will glow white to show you which ones were being worked on. This is awful on several levels. First off, the chances of this working entirely is dependent on so many things going in your favor. First, someone has to be working on a generator when this goes off. Then they need to get off of it. Most people start approaching the hook the moment the killer picks up their friend. Even still, without this, they might assume someone else is getting the poor fucker and stay where they are. Even if you do pull it off, 45 seconds is nowhere near enough of a penalty. You also have to remember that it doesn't block the gen for 45 seconds, it blocks them while the perk is active. So, if someone repairs for 30 seconds and gets off, it's only blocked for 15 seconds. Then you need to remember that this is an exclusive perk to the obsession, so unless you have Furtive Chase or Nemesis, this will only activate 3 times max. And in the event that all of this stuff doesn't get in the way and the survivor does pull a dumb, what do you get? 45 seconds of them hiding from you. Sure, that's kind of nice, but at what point do you realize you're wasting your time looking for them and you could be spending that time camping the obsession? Hell, even if the perk is working as intended, you counter yourself if you're running the meta perks of today. And just hear me out here, but how about a simple change so that every time the obsession gets off of a generator, it blocks for 45 seconds. It'd be simple, effective, and most importantly, it'd have a use at least once a game. The only problem is that we're considering the ability to impede progress a good thing now. Anyway, closing thoughts? Oh yeah, I thought this killer was pretty good. The power to deal quick damage at a distance would be enough, but the fact that the gun controls this way is the Deathslinger's saving grace. Since the gun snaps to your shoulder, you almost instantly start triggering mind games in the survivor. And the fact that you can bring the gun back down just as fast is not to be understated. This isn't even talking about the bullets themselves, which can provide a fast way to catch survivors and inflict some good slowdown. I think more killers should be designed this way, because at the very least I know the creative spark is still in behavior somewhere behind that giant wax statue of M. Cote in the brazen walls of the their slow mode chat, there's still a soul in there that makes up cool ideas. They just shouldn't be allowed to make the perks is what I'm saying. Which killer do you guys want to see next? I have a poll out on Twitter with three killers to pick from, so expect this one to drop around the 14th. Apologies if this video is a little bit shorter than usual, but don't worry, I'm not going to fill the next three minutes with an extended opinion on the Far Cry 6 protagonist, I'm just gonna do another dance number. Oh,